Today I'll be showing you guys how to change the chain and sprockets on a 2008 Honda CBR 600 RR. I will also be doing a 520 conversion with a minus one for the front sprocket. As you can see, my chain is pretty rusty, so it's definitely time for a new one. So the first part is you want to remove the chain. So you're going to have to cut one of these links. Next, you're going to take a grinder and you're going to flatten one of these pins. Be very careful while you're grinding away your link. You don't want to nick your swing arm. It might behoove you to cut the chain somewhere in the middle instead of on the sprocket like I'm doing here. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be using the RK chain tool. I'll have a link in the description below. But when you open it up, it should look something like this. Make sure you do read the directions. I've already read them though. So first, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this piece right here. It's TPC 210. And you're gonna place it right in there like this. So for this tool, it's gonna look just like this. So here we go, slip it right over the back. Now we take this part with it centered and we just tighten it. Tighten it until it makes contact with the link. And you can put a wrench on this, but I think your hands are probably strong enough just to do that. Now you take this, you put it right through here and you start threading it in. Once you feel it bottom out, you can take a 14 millimeter wrench and you're gonna tighten it. Go nice and slow. This can take a while, so if you have an electric ratchet like this, make use of it. I'll leave a link down in the description below where you can get this. And just like that, your chain is broken. Now this is actually the perfect opportunity to clean out the bike a little bit. So I'm gonna remove this chain guard so I can get a good cleaning done. Okay, next we're going to remove this cover. In order to get to it, there's an eight millimeter bolt right here. So we turn that. Next, you're going to remove this bolt. It's a 10 millimeter. And don't forget this bolt right down here. And as you can see, all in here is extremely dirty. I'm gonna make sure this is spotless. With the transmission now in gear, There we go. Now it's time for me to mount my speedo healer. Since I will be going minus one in the front sprocket, the speedometer will be off. This should fix that. I went with the speedo DRD brand. Everything is completely plug and play with this installation. So you're just going to want to route the wire. I kind of like just looped it around up here and it's just tucked over here with the zip tie and it's right there. So when I go to calibrate it, I can just press the button right there. Easy access, but from afar, you can't even really tell that it's anything extra. Eight point seven ounces, 
5.8 ounces. The torque for this is 40 foot pounds. Make sure you use the torque wrench. Two millimeter. I got these new CBR 600 double R wheels from a 2000, I believe off of 2020. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna replace the sprocket with the ultra lightweight one. Forty seven foot pound of torque. Check it out, guys. Brand new Litec chain adjusters. Eighty three foot pound of torque. If the links are off, you just got to adjust your train. I pushed mine in a little bit, and now I have exactly one link, which is where the master is going to go. Okay, so now we're going to take our chain tool and we're just going to have this piece right here, which is the PBL 220. And then we're going to take this and you want to make sure that the pin is facing the clip, not rivet. I know it's kind of confusing, but you want the clip part going there. If you read the directions, they'll say the same thing. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this part and insert it right into here. And now you're set up to press the link. Okay, so you're going to take your lube here and you're going to take your O-rings and here's your master clip. So it was at this point where I discovered that I had the wrong master link. The chain I ordered supplied me with a clip style master link and not a rivet type. I made a huge user error and didn't read the package in and attempted to install the clip link instead. In doing so, I managed to damage my tool and waste a ton of time. Don't worry, the damage that I caused to the tool will not prevent me from installing the new rivet type master link and the chain itself wasn't harmed. A new rivet style master link was ordered and will be installed later in this video. Until then, we will just start putting back together the bike. chain guard bolts so I just found out that this is actually a clip link so I totally messed that up 
Uh, luckily, I was able to order the correct one, which is for rivets. So we're gonna take the rivet master link. Very important to make sure it's a rivet master link. Now, before installing your master link, make sure you lubricate the X rings using the supplied grease. And you can't use too much here, so really coat the entire thing as best as you can. Don't forget to put the X-Rings on first, then slip the master link over the rear of the chain, allowing the X-Rings to make contact with the chain. Next, add two more X-Rings onto the other side. Now we're going to place the master link. Make sure you have the words facing out. And make sure they're facing the right way. Don't put them upside down like that. You can press a little bit by hand just to hold it in there. As mentioned before, it's going to look something like this. And you're going to have this piece in there like that, making sure that it's clipped in on both sides. All right, I'm just gonna do two turns and I'm gonna back it out. Let's make sure that it's going on evenly. It is pressing pretty much completely evenly right now, which is important. And our links are facing the correct way. Everything looks good, let's keep going. The most important thing is that you periodically check this to make sure. So here's our master link that we're riveting. This is at 16.96. Sixteen point eight five, sixteen point eight five, yeah, sixteen point nine one. Okay, so next step is to uh, flare out these rivets, and in order to do so, you're gonna set your tool like this. You're gonna get this piece right here, which is the FP five hundred JP. You're gonna insert that right into there, and on the back here, you're gonna insert, this is TPP220, and that goes back right there. Put it over the link, and make sure it's centered on that. Your wrench, slowly start flaring that rivet. Take your time on this, this is the most important part. Yeah, we wanna be at around 5.5. That's the sweet spot. So we've got a little bit more to go. Okay, that sounds good. And we'll keep doing this and keep checking it until it's right. Yeah, 5.43, 5 5.43, 5.43, 5.43, all right, four or five, there we go. All right, so I'd say this is officially riveted and ready to go. This is a good chain. So a little bit of a transition for you guys. Now I'm on the bike and I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts and opinions of the 520 chain conversion going minus one in the front, plus zero in the rear. Also, these wheels are off of a uh, 2020 CBR 600 R. They changed the style in 2013 to this. Looks much better. And they, they're supposed to be a little lighter. I don't know. They kind of seem about the same heaviness to me. So I don't, it's not a performance upgrade. Mostly just aesthetics. And also, guys, I did already calculate the speedometer using that plug. Um, I have it buried back in here again. But basically, I'll put the instructions on the screen for you guys. Now, from the factory, these bikes do have an error on the speedometer. They're off by about, I think, 5%. That's from the factory. And with these settings, I was able to keep that 5% error. I can make it completely 100% accurate, but I think I might leave it at a little bit of an error. So if this bike's reading 100 miles per hour, I'm actually going about 97 so it's pretty dang close, close enough for me. But anyway, at least uh, the trip, the odometer is not going to get screwed up, which is the most important thing. So anyway, we are going to take this bike for a quick ride, and I'll give you guys my thoughts and opinions. So I've been riding this 1000 R a decent bit, and it's been a while since I've ridden with the stock sprocket configuration, so I might not be able to give you a complete accurate description of how it's been because it's been a while since I've ridden the bike. This bike like that, and I've ridden other bikes that are faster, so it kind of desensitizes me a little bit. But just keep that in mind. Anyway, let's go ahead. Let's get off. <laughs> and remember, remind you guys, the speedometer is accurate again. Well, accurate, as accurate as the stock one is. Now, <laughs> right away, I will tell you guys this, you definitely do get a little bit more bottom ends. It's not, it's not really bottom ends. You kind of just get, the bike just kind of accelerates a little bit quicker, revs a little bit faster. It doesn't give you actually more bottom end power. It kind of gives you normal power, but regardless, it's nice to have. You get a little bit extra on the, you know, you get up to the middle range quicker. That's kind of what you're doing when you do a sprocket change. You kind of jump in, 
from the low RPM to the high RPMs a little bit quicker because of that. So right now, I'm, for instance, my 4,000 RPM in third gear at 30 miles an hour, if I was on stock sprockets, this would probably be at a lower RPM. So it's just an RPM thing. It's not that I have more power at 3,000 RPM. I have the same amount of power at 3,000 RPM. The only difference is now I can go from 3,000 RPM to 4,000 RPM much faster. Now some of you may be wondering why I decided to go minus one in the front and not the plus two in the rear. So for a little bit I was contemplating doing that, a minus one plus two, but I decided that I kind of liked the stock configuration. I was didn't really feel like I needed more acceleration. And so I decided that when I did, had to do the chain of sprockets and I was gonna, I was gonna just do a, fi a complete stock kit, just renew it and be move on with my life. But then I got to thinking, and then I was like, you know what? Let's just try the 520 kit. Let's see what it's all about. Let's see if it's, a, let's see what everybody's saying. You know, the whole point is I want to experience everything with motorcycling. I want to experience sprocket changes, all that stuff. And this is a good way for me to do that. So I went ahead and I just said, all right, whatever. Motorcycle channel, let's, let's give it a shot. Now I didn't do the plus two because I thought minus one was enough, to be honest with you. I have plenty of bikes and I kind of like the idea of this bike having some of its highway capabilities still all right okay <laughs> oh man all of these cars are trying to kill you guys at every moment don't you ever forget that they're always trying to kill you but anyway I, I kind of wanted to keep my 600 as still a good street bike I don't want to make it like a track bike or anything like that so I said, all right, that's fine. I'll just do the minus one and see how I like it. And I'll tell you guys right now, the 520 conversion, I kind of wish I had the stock front sprocket just so I could see like how much the 520 conversion makes a difference on its own. Because I don't know if the, the differences I'm feeling are the 520 conversion or if it's the minus one sprocket. But I will say this. <laughs> I like it. I like it so far. This is good. Um, this has been... <laughs> this definitely woke the bike up a little bit more. Having a full exhaust system and a geared 600 makes it just feel so crisp. Like, it's hard to describe. I've ridden the HP4 a little bit. I have like maybe 200 miles on it. So I'm still fairly new with the HP4. I don't exactly have a good... Like, I can't exactly say, like, oh, yeah, I know everything about the HP4. I don't. I'm still completely new on it. But after riding the HP4 for a while, it makes me appreciate a lot more of this bike. I know that might be, sound a little crazy. Why would a faster bike make you appreciate your slower bike? Well, the thing is, is that even though this bike's slower, it's a lot more fun to be able to really rev it out like that. I can't rev out the HP4. Now, I will say this guys, I've ridden the HP4 a couple times now since that first ride video and holy smokes, is that a fantastic bike. I can't say enough good things about how good that bike is, but I have to admit my 600 is still my favorite bike and I'm not even nostalgia. Like I just really love riding these 600s. They are such fantastic bikes and anybody out there that says that a 600 is a girl's bike or whatever. Any negative things people say about a 600 based on how fast it is, they're just haters. Uh, it it's really comes down to just that. They're just haters. Uh, let's try it on the highway real quick, guys. See, see how the highway does us with a minus one. Oh, we got a clear road. Slow down so you guys can hear me. I can tell at about 115, 120, the bike, it got there quick, but it started to kind of slow down a little bit at that 130-ish mark. And that's to be expected. And, and the whole point of this bike entirely is that I, I don't need to go that fast. I don't need to do 130. I don't ever really need to go that fast. I think that 
going 110, 120 is plenty fast enough. In fact, I think even slower than that's good. Just doing this, oh, it's here. Huh? Fifth gear. Did I lose sixth? Hmm. That's weird. That's really weird. Okay, let's, oh, is it because the, <laughs> that's hilarious. I thought I lost six gear. No, I just, I, I have to, my, my gear indicator needs to relearn my bike now because it thinks that sixth gear is fifth gear because of the RPMs. That's so funny. I didn't even think about that. I was sitting here, I was like, wow, I really, my bike's busted. <laughs> oh, thank God. That's not the case. Yeah, look, I'm still in fifth, I, yeah. I gotta, the whole bike needs to relearn itself. The gear indicator's totally wrong now. Okay, that's fine. As long as I know that. <clears throat> All right, so that is the bike with the 520 conversion kit, minus one in the front, brand new upgraded wheels, and I gotta admit guys, my bike feels like a new bike again. Feels completely new to me. Love this bike. No plans to ever get rid of it. I'm excited to have another season with an amazing machine. So anyway, guys, hopefully this video is helpful to you. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like and let me know how I'm doing in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, bro.